Hello everyone, I'm Nathan Cooper. I'd love to share my story with you all. It's about how I discovered that sometimes the people who should support you the most can be the ones holding you back. But don't worry, this story has a satisfying ending. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to see more stories like mine. I'm a 26-year-old software developer in Seattle, and I've always believed in working hard and helping others. Just last month, I got promoted to senior developer at TechFront, a growing startup where I've been developing educational software. It's my dream job. I get to combine coding with my passion for teaching. Nathan, you're killing it with the new learning module. My best friend Marcus says this during our lunch break. He's been my friend since college and now works in the same company. Thanks, man. The kids at the coding program are actually helping me make it more user-friendly. Speaking of which, you should join us this weekend at the Youth Center. Those kids adore you, Marcus laughs, especially since you helped Tommy build his first website. My phone buzzes. It's my sister Emma calling. She's in her final year of college, studying biochemistry. Hey, Em, everything okay? Nathan, Dad's been asking about your promotion. Her voice sounds worried. He mentioned something about family obligations. I sigh. Our father Thomas has a history of financial problems. Ever since Mom passed away when Emma was 12, he's been making questionable decisions, but lately things have been getting worse. Did he try to borrow money from you again? No, but he keeps talking about how expensive my tuition is, even though I'm on a scholarship. Later that evening, while working late at the office, my coworker Sarah stops by my desk. Still perfecting that code? Yeah, just trying to make sure everything's perfect for tomorrow's presentation. You know, Nathan, the company's looking to fund new internal projects. Your educational software ideas could really take off. I smile, thinking about my dream of starting my own educational tech company. That would be amazing. I've been saving up to... My phone interrupts with a text from Dad. Son, we need to talk about financial responsibilities. Family comes first. I stare at the message, remembering how he borrowed money from Aunt Linda last year and never paid her back. But I push these thoughts aside and focus on my work. I've learned to handle my father carefully while keeping my distance. The next day at the youth center, I'm helping kids learn basic coding. There's something special about seeing their faces light up when they create their first program. Mr. Cooper, I made it work. Tommy shows me his screen proudly. That's fantastic. See, I told you you could do it. Little did I know that this normal, happy period of my life was about to change dramatically. My father was planning something that would force me to make one of the toughest decisions of my life and reveal truths I wasn't prepared to face. But that's a story for the next chapter. One week after my promotion, everything changed. I was reviewing some code at my desk when my phone lit up with multiple missed calls from Dad. When I finally called back, his voice was different, desperate, and angry. I lost my job. The company's saying it's negligence, but they're lying. I need your help with the bills. Dad, I'm sorry about your job. Maybe I can help you look for a new one. I don't need job hunting advice, Nathan. I need money. You're making good money now. It's time to step up for family. That conversation was just the beginning. The next day I received a strange call from my bank about suspicious credit card applications. What I discovered made my blood run cold. Sir, we show six credit cards opened in your name over the past eight years, starting when you turned 18. My hands started shaking. That's impossible. I only have two cards. The addresses listed are 1425 Pine Street, Seattle. Dad's address, I confronted him at his house that evening. The stack of mail on his kitchen counter told the whole story. Credit card statements, all in my name. You had no right going through my mail. He slammed his hand on the counter. Your mail? These have my name on them. How could you do this? I raised you alone after your mother died. Everything I did was for this family. Now it's your turn to take care of things. By giving you my entire salary? That's insane. You live in your fancy apartment while I'm about to lose everything. You owe me. I owe you. You stole my identity. That's when Emma burst through the door. 
tears streaming down her face. Nathan, there's more. Remember my student loans? The money's gone. And Dad took it. The revelation hit me like a punch to the gut. Dad's face turned red with rage. Get out! Both of you ungrateful kids, get out of my house. You want to abandon family? Fine, don't come crawling back. I left with Emma, my mind spinning. My phone buzzed, a text from Marcus. Hey, everything okay? You missed our morning meeting? I called him immediately, my voice shaking as I explained everything. Come stay with me, Marcus said without hesitation. My spare room's yours as long as you need it. That night, while helping Emma move her things to campus housing, my Aunt Linda called. Nathan, I heard what happened. There's something you need to know. Your father, he didn't just target you kids last year's loan from me. He used that money to pay off gambling debts, and I'm not the only one. The pieces were falling into place. Every family gathering where relatives avoided Dad, every hushed conversation, every burnt bridge. My phone kept buzzing with text messages from Dad. You're making a big mistake. Family should stick together. You'll regret this. I blocked his number. Later that night, in Marcus's spare room, I opened my laptop to find an email from Sarah. Nathan, heard about what happened. The company's legal team wants to meet with you tomorrow. Apparently, your father tried to access your work accounts. We caught it in time, but you need to know what he's been up to. I closed my laptop, my mind racing. This was bigger than just me and Emma. How many others had my father hurt? And what else would I discover as I dug deeper into his web of lies? The next day would bring answers I never expected and force me to make decisions that would change everything. The meeting with the company's legal team changed everything. Sarah had discovered that my father had attempted to impersonate me in emails to HR, trying to redirect my salary to his account. We need to talk about something else, too, Sarah said, pulling out a thick folder. Your father used to work at Global Tech in Boston. I found some interesting connections. A credit fraud investigator named Agent Rodriguez joined our meeting. Mr. Cooper, your father's pattern goes beyond family. We've identified at least 12 victims across three states. My phone buzzed. A text from Uncle Robert. Nathan, your father's telling everyone you threatened him. What's going on? Classic manipulation. I'd seen it before, but now I understood his playbook. Later that day, I received an unexpected email from Michael Chen, Dad's former business partner. Nathan, I've been trying to reach you. Your father wasn't just fired from Global Tech. There's more to the story. Can we meet? At a coffee shop in downtown Seattle, Michael revealed the truth. Your father orchestrated a sophisticated investment scheme. He convinced employees to invest in a fake startup. I have documentation. Back at work, I buried myself in coding, trying to maintain normalcy. My educational software project was gaining attention. The board loves your proposal, Sarah mentioned during a project meeting. They want to fast-track it. That afternoon, Emma called in tears. Dad showed up at my dorm. He's telling my roommate's parents I'm unstable and need to move back home. Pack your things, I said. I found you a studio apartment near campus. It's small but safe. The next week was a blur of activity. Agent Rodriguez and I mapped out my father's network of fraud. Sarah helped me document everything, creating detailed timelines and evidence folders. A breakthrough came when my grandmother's nurse called. Your father's been accessing your grandmother's accounts. We found irregular transfers dating back two years. I spoke with other victims, each story more heartbreaking than the last. A single mom who lost her savings, a retired teacher whose pension was drained. My father had mastered the art of exploiting trust. Meanwhile, I channeled my anger into something positive. I expanded my youth coding program, offering free classes to kids who couldn't afford them. You seem different, Marcus observed one evening. Stronger. I'm done being a victim, I replied, reviewing another document from Agent Rodriguez. Then came the email that changed everything. From Dad's former secretary at Global Tech. I've kept these records for years, afraid to come forward. But after seeing what happened to your family... There's something you need to see about the company's missing pension funds. As I read through her attached files, my hands steady for the first time in weeks, I realized we finally had everything we needed. The complete picture was worse than anyone imagined. 
But now, there was no going back. I forwarded everything to Agent Rodriguez, then called Emma. It's almost over, Em, but tomorrow's going to be tough. My father's carefully constructed house of cards was about to collapse. Not because of what he did to me, but because of the trail of destruction he'd left behind. Justice was coming. Not from me, but from the very system he thought he could manipulate forever. The morning everything changed started like any other. I was at my desk, reviewing code for my educational software project, when the office TVs flashed breaking news. My father's face appeared on screen as reporters discussed a major financial fraud investigation at Global Tech. Michael Chen had finally gone public with evidence of the investment scheme. Within hours, other victims started coming forward. My phone lit up with a message from Agent Rodriguez. Turn on the news. Your grandmother's case broke it wide open. The elder abuse investigation connected all the dots. I watched as years of manipulation and fraud unraveled in real time. The authorities were investigating over $2 million in fraudulent activities, none related to what he'd done to me or Emma. His own actions had finally caught up with him. Sarah rushed to my desk. Nathan, the board wants to meet, now. In the conference room, our CEO made an unexpected announcement. Nathan, your educational software prototype has impressed some major investors. They want to back it as a separate venture. With everything going on, we understand if you need time. No, I interrupted. I need this more than ever. Over the next few months, life changed dramatically. My educational software company, LearnBright, launched with backing from major tech investors. We partnered with youth centers across Seattle to provide free coding education to underprivileged kids. Emma graduated with honors and landed a research position at a top biotech firm. During her graduation ceremony, she gave a speech that brought tears to my eyes. Success isn't about where you come from, but who you choose to become. Marcus became LearnBright's security director, making sure no one could ever manipulate our systems. Sarah joined as head of product development, her insight proving invaluable. One morning, I visited the youth center where it all started. Tommy, my first student, was now teaching other kids. Mr. Cooper, I got accepted to MIT's computer science program. That's incredible, Tommy. Keep reaching for those stars. Later that day, I received an unexpected letter. My father, facing consequences for his actions, wanted to meet. He wrote about regret, about wanting to make amends. I thought about all the lives he damaged, the trust he'd broken, the pain he'd caused. Then I thought about everything I'd built from those ashes. Return to sender, I told the mail clerk. That evening, I hosted a dinner at my new house. Marcus, Sarah, Emma and other true friends gathered to celebrate LearnBright's latest achievement, a partnership with the National Education Initiative. Remember when you used to code at my kitchen table? Marcus laughed. Now look at you, CEO of the year, Sarah added. Emma raised her glass of sparkling cider. To chosen family. Looking around at these faces, people who supported me, believed in me, stood by me, I felt something I hadn't felt in years. Peace. The next morning, I walked into LearnBright's new offices. Pictures of our student success stories aligned the walls. A new group of eager young coders waited in the training room. Welcome to LearnBright, I began. Here, we believe everyone deserves a chance to build their future. My phone buzzed. Another message from my father threw a different number. I deleted it without reading and turned back to my students. Sometimes the best revenge isn't about getting even. It's about building something beautiful from the wreckage others leave behind. It's about choosing who you want to be, regardless of who raised you. That's my story, not just of survival, but of triumph, of choosing light over darkness, creation over destruction, and most importantly, of building a life filled with people who lift you up instead of tear you down. What would you do if a family member who deeply hurt you came asking for forgiveness after facing consequences for their actions. Would you give them another chance like many suggest, or stand firm with your boundaries like Nathan did? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm really interested in hearing your perspective on forgiveness versus protecting your peace. If this story resonated with you, 
please give it a like and subscribe to see more real stories about overcoming toxic relationships and building a better life. Remember, sometimes the family you choose is stronger than the family you're born into. Thank you for watching.